This is the smallest car in the world, and this is me crashing in a few years ago. All this time, I thought it was my fault. I thought I was a bad driver. Turns out it wasn't. They built the car wrong. In fact, they designed an entirely new part to keep it from tipping so easily. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pumphrey Bar. They named it after me. Now this isn't the first time that a car company had to come up with a fix for a problem after the car already came out. It actually happens all the time. And today, we're looking at some of the crazy examples of this. And then I'm gonna attempt the impossible to drive this car 180 degrees to see if the Pumphrey Bar actually works. Welcome to Donut. I put my body on the line for you guys. First up on this list, we have the 2010 GMC Terrain, a car that I'm pretty sure I've never even heard of, which is amazing because I've heard of cars professionally. And I'm sure that if I saw one, I wouldn't notice. Now this SUV named after the concept of land had a problem that was bigger and more annoying than Billy Eichner. The headlights were too dang bright, which besides being extremely annoying is also dangerous. Now the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration or NHTSA even came out and said that the glare could dazzle oncoming drivers, increasing the risk of a crash and they forced GMC to rectify the situation. So. How they fix it? Well, they did something that we've actually done before. They sent people stickers. That's right. People brought their terrains into the dealership where a small sticker was placed over the part of the headlight, giving it a frosted glass effect. That's nothing fancy, but it does the trick. And hey, who doesn't like a free sticker? If you would like a free exclusive sticker every couple months, sign up for the Donut Underground and you'll get stickers plus exclusive access to behind the scenes content on our Discord. Click the join button down below to learn more. But enough about me doing seamless promos for things. <laughs> Next up, a car close to our heart. The BMW E30 3 Series. I own one. You know what's fun about them? Driving them. You know what's not fun? Having boiling coolant squirting all over your legs and dong while you're driving. You see, when cooling systems fail, that coolant has to go somewhere. But in some rare cases with six cylinder E30 BMWs, the heater core would fail. And if there was too much pressure in the system, it would allow coolant to shoot out. And BMW put the heater core in the driver's side footwell right next to the driver's legs and dong area, i.e. not where you want hot coolant shooting. Oh, my legs are bald! So in the early 90s, BMW had to issue a legs and dong area saving recall on about 375,000 3 Series. Solution was a bypass valve that would fail before the heater core valve, saving thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of precious legs and dongs. Next fix comes courtesy of the 2020 Toyota Supra. Now this one's unique because it's not a safety issue. It's just annoying, like Billy Ike. If you ever rolled your windows down and you've heard like a whoa, 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 like a helicopter sound? Sounds like a helicopter in here. And basically the aerodynamics of the Supra make that noise and the pressure change in the cabin unbearable. The airflow around the A-pillar causes pressure to build up in the cabin, which makes for a loud, uncomfortable situation while driving at any any sort of speed. No freaking way, bro! Now, Toyota never issued a fix for this problem, but multiple aftermarket companies did. Most of these fixes involve a small piece of plastic applied on the side view mirrors that drastically reduce the effect of wind buffeting. You can find these online ranging in price from $9 to $200 for these carbon fiber ones. Or you can just try taping some plastic on your own car for free. I'm gonna reattempt to drive the POP50 and find out if the Pumphrey bar actually works. How do you know if your car is truly happy? What's causing the problems? When did it start? Okay, I'm not actually talking about your car. I'm talking about you. Let's say you're this cylinder head and this spark plug is a therapist. Well, today's sponsor, BetterHelp, connects you with a licensed therapist in as little as a few days. To get started, you just have to fill out a few questions about what you're looking for, and BetterHelp will match you with one of over 30,000 therapists in their network. And if this specific spark plug doesn't fit your engine properly, well, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional cost. Whether you're busy with a project car, spinning some laps, or creating YouTube videos, BetterHelp enables you to have therapy over the phone, through messaging, or on a video chat. If you like feeling your best, 
consider BetterHelp. And if you like donut, head on over to betterhelp.com slash donut to get 10% off your first month of therapy. Next up is a company known for exceptional build quality and a down-to-earth spokesman. Not, I'm talking about Tesla. Some drivers of the Tesla Model Y found their cooling systems held in place by what appears to be faux wooden trim, like something that you might find at so many Ikeas. Right, now this might be something you'd expect if your uncle built a car for you in his garage or if you bought your car at Ikea, but not so much if you paid $50,000 for a brand new Model Y. The user who found this claims that they discovered it in the front when trying to fix their own panel gaps after Tesla refused. The Tesla Model Y reportedly had a bunch of issues with things not fitting in place in the front and this faux wood is meant to keep the straps around the cooling system tight so nothing shakes loose. Personally, I like shaking loose. Shake loose, bro. In 2011, Mazda recalled 52,000 Mazda 6 models because of an issue with cracked fuel tanks. Right, you're never gonna guess what this led to. These cracks in the fuel tanks could have led to engine fires. Uh, yeah, that'd be a legitimate reason for a recall if I ever heard one. Engine fires, imagine the potential damage to your legs and dog. But would you believe me if I told you that it was something even scarier that caused the fuel tank cracks in the first place? Spiders. Turns out it was spiders. <laughs> All right, somehow spiders were attracted to the hydrocarbons left over in the vent lines in the gas tank. The spiders would make their way in and build freaking webs in the fuel tank hoses. This blocked airflow in said hoses, which sometimes resulted in cracked fuel tanks. Mazda fixed the problem by installing springs to keep the spiders out, which is not something I wanna hear about a car. Honestly, guys, I don't know how stuff works. I could probably figure it out, but I don't wanna. They also updated the software in the cars to alleviate pressure in the fuel tanks, keeping them from cracking. Mazda issued a second recall in 2014. That is two recalls for spiders. Now I'm gonna go on record. That's way too many recalls for spiders. I'm gonna a spoiler alert. That's not even gonna be the last time spiders are mentioned on this list. We all know by now that Hyundai has made their cars very easy to steal. We've made videos about it. You just rip this down, pull this cylinder out. <laughs> <laughs> Hyundai didn't like it, but we had to because it is so easy to steal their cars that it became a TikTok trend, which led to a $200 million class action lawsuit against Hyundai and Kia. State Farm actually will not insure Hyundais or Kias in some states, is a headline I think I saw. So Hyundai decided to get ahead of this problem and sent 80 clubs to the Cleveland Police Department. They sent a 37-year-old infomercial device club. to mitigate theft in one city in Ohio. <laughs> There's only one problem. People figured out how to break into the club about 37 years ago. We made a video about it. Ah. Yeah! It's easy. Turns out, we've made a lot of videos about how to steal a car. But even if you couldn't break the club, there's probably 60,000 people that drive Hyundais in Cleveland alone. What the hell is 80 clubs gonna do? What is the point of that? I think that one gets the award for lamest recall. I miss my spiders. All right, next up on this list is Honda. And buckle up, buttercups, because this is a wild one. Our old friends, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, the same people back there that cracked down on GMC's dazzling headlights, forced Honda to issue a recall on their owner's manual. A recall on a book? What is this, Florida? NHTSA ruled that the manual incorrectly describes when the passenger airbag off indicator should illuminate, which could lead to increased risk of personal injury in the event of a crash if the driver or passenger is confused. Listen, if I'm driving, confuse me all you want, but if my princess gets confused, who's gonna touch the back of my neck? The fix for this problem, another sticker. <laughs> Why don't they just give the spider stickers Maybe that fixed problem. Honda drivers were told to visit the dealership to get a sticker to put in their manual with less confusing information. Now, if you own a Honda CRV and you're one of the people that drove to the dealership to get a new sticker for your owner's manual, hit us up at Dolan's personal email, mrsharrystyles at gmail.com. I'd love to make fun of you. <laughs> 
This next one is maybe not so funny though, so please do not laugh. First gen Audi TT models had a very serious problem. They suffered from instability and loss of directional control at high speeds. Owners found that the rear end of the car would lift and lose control, especially at speeds in excess of 110 miles per hour, which seems like something that you'd want to test. Volkswagen has like the highest speed track in the world. That's where they test like all the cars going fast. And they didn't think like, hey, maybe we test our car going fast. They fixed the problem by adding stiffer rear springs, updating the electronic stability control, and my favorite, retrofitting a small spoiler to both the TT Coupe and Roadster variants to keep that back end planted, which is the opposite of squirrely. Maybe they should throw a pumphrey rod on one of those Audis for good measure. It wouldn't hurt. All right, so we've made it to the top three. Might as well click off JK Don't because these last ones are nuts. Absolutely squirrel fooded out, baby. Nuts. A good snack. Imagine this, it's 2001. You're 17 years old and your dad keeps bugging you about cleaning out the garage and you just about had it with that geezer. So you jump in the Dodge Caravan and you plop in satellite by P.O.D. Bumping so hard that your speakers light on fire. I know what you're doing right now. You're sitting there thinking, dang James, that is a great metaphor for how good P.O.D. is. But guess what, Buttercup? It's not a freaking metaphor. It's really 2001, and your speakers are really on fire. And now, you gotta deal with it. That's the scenario I would imagine that drivers of 2001, 2002 Dodge Caravans went through. When condensation dripped off the air conditioner of that van, sometimes, it dripped through vent holes onto the top of the radio. Now, if the radio short-circuited, it would send enough surge down the speaker wire to set the speaker on fire. Not sick if you have to replace your whole stuff. And worst case scenario, you burn up your legs and doll. Dodge fixed the issue by putting a little cover on the radio vent slots and advising drivers only listen to not POD. The second to last entry on this list is probably the most reliable car company that ever lived. Depending on the day, if you ask me what is your favorite car company, what's the most impressive car company ever, depending on the day, I will say Toyota. But just like all of us goats, they do have their off days. Like when I wrecked this POV 50. And also when I wrecked this Subaru WRX. Toyota's off day took place back in 2013. They voluntarily recalled 800 thousand Camrys, Venzas, and Avalons after their airbags randomly deployed on the road. Can you imagine something worse? You're driving down the road and all of a sudden you get Tommy Boyd right in the face. I'm asking the same question as you guys. What the crap, how did that happen? Yeah, spiders. The spiders are back and they were building webs inside the air conditioning units on some of these Toyotas which could cause water and condensation to drip onto the airbag control module situated underneath the AC. Where are the spiders coming from? This is now the third spider related recall. In most cases, this would only result in the airbag light turning on, but in at least three cases, the driver's side airbag went off, smashing someone in the face and causing a wreck. Could have fixed the problem. They added some sealant on the AC unit to prevent spiders from getting in and then a cover over the airbag system to block out any moisture in case the spiders did get in. That brings us to our final car on the list. In 2002, 2004, Volkswagen recalled a bunch of Jettas and Golfs because the seat warmers were malfunctioning. Drivers reported that in some cases, the heated seats could not be turned off, but the heaters could not be turned off so much that they burned holes through the seats, through jeans, even through jackets. Jackets? How are you supposed to protect your legs and dog? The cause of the problem had to do with a hardware malfunction that sometimes occurs when the ignition and the seat heater switch were both on at the same time. God forbid you wanna get your legs and dong warm while you're driving. Volkswagen did issue a recall for these cars and they fixed the problem by changing out the seat heater switch. But interestingly, the recall expired in 2007. Huh, guess you had to be quick to get it fixed. 
And Volkswagen was just like, no, tell your legs and dong sorry. And now against my wishes and better judgment, it is time to put the Pumphrey rod to the test. So all you need to know about the Pumphrey bar is that it acts like a training wheel. If the car starts to tip over, the bar stops it. That's it. That's engineering. After four years since my horrific, not embarrassing at all crash, I'm gonna drive the Peel P50 and find out if the Pumphrey bar actually works. See, it wasn't my fault. Just like everything else. Thank you guys for watching this video. Just hit that subscribe button if you liked it. We upload multiple times a week. If you want some donut apparel, we are now available in Zoomies at any mall in the US or Canada or at Blue Tomato in select stores in Europe. Ooh.